you know, I, I've been just really lucky. Yeah. And I, I've worked with uh, some really extraordinary people. And then I got God sent to MASH and was, mm -hmm. you know, given this gift for the eight year period where I yeah. extraordinary time. One of, that show is like monumental in my life. Like I, I, I have memories watching it when I was a kid and just laughing because you guys were always hilarious. Like that show, whether you, for a kid, whether you understood the jokes or not, didn't matter. You guys had a pattern and a cadence and you were quick and you were expressive. So it was always funny to me then. And then growing up with it and actually understanding it was just, uh, just learning at a whole new level was amazing. Um, was it, was it cool and then smooth transition coming into that show when you did, you know, after the fan base was set or no? It was fabulous. Uh, oh. Say a brief story. Um, I was under contract because I had done the show with Tony Quinn, and it, as mm -hmm. I suspect, it only lasted a year. But then I was under contract at Universal, which was not a happy place for me to be because they had wanted me to do a lot of junk that I didn't particularly want to do. Right. A um, couple of years out of the Quinn show, a guy came to me with a. Uh, I had just a uh, uh, longer story, and I don't want to get into the whole thing. But I had discovered MASH. A friend of mine said uh, we were to go out to dinner, and he said, I can't leave until the MASH is over. And I said, what's that? <laughs> he pointed it out, and we, we were we stood watching this show. And I was literally blown away. I, I will never forget the scene I saw was Gary Berghoff, Radar, mm -hmm. going through the craziness that he went through, you know, this naive kid, teenager still. Mm -hmm. uh, in this madhouse and he was trying to kind of keep things together himself and the company and everything and i was so impressed with the work he was doing with the work that was allowed to be done and with what it was about i just couldn't forget it and i went back to my contract at universal and a, and a guy came to me with a show he said i'd like you to i'd like you to read this series i'd like you to be the star of this show and i said I need to see the script and he sent me the script and I read it, it was just one of those dumb situation comedies you know joke 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 and right. jokes per page etc and I went back to him and I said thank you but I, I'm really not interested in, and he said you, you're turning down the lead in a television series and I said uh, yeah and he said <laughs> he's why and I said I didn't want to say you're We've written a stupid show, so I said, oh, "It's it's not match." Mm. And and what I meant was, it's not about something, you know. Right. It's not not a show that has an undergirth of 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 reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just sort of shook his head. And the next year, uh, my agent called and said, uh, "Wayne Rogers may be leaving the show. They want to know if you'd be interested in coming over and and talking." Wow. And I said, would I? I <laughs> I'm under contract to Universal. Can I? And he said, well, we'll worry about that later. So I went over and had a meeting and um, wow. I, I said, you know, the I, I, I said, I adore this show. I, I would be I would be honored to be part of it. And they weren't sure at the time whether Wayne was actually going to leave. Um, mm -hmm. They said, but if he does, we've got to have somebody and we got to, you know, think it through. Mm -hmm. I said, the one thing I don't want to do, wouldn't want to do, is uh, come in as Trapper John, as the actor who so, sort of suddenly becomes, you know, right. the actor suddenly plays this character. And they said, no, 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 that's that's uh, that's not what we have in mind at all. And it's not necessary. We're, it's the military. People transfer out. People die. People whatever. Sure. And I said, uh, they said, we have this character in mind. He would be married and have a, probably have a child at home and is intent on being uh, faithful and not a womanizer like Hawkeye and Trapper. How would that feel? Mm -hmm. And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> to portray fidelity on national television? Are you kidding me? Right. I'd, I'd love to do something like that. God, that would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I left not knowing if Wayne was going to stay or go or whatever. Right. And uh, next they called and said, do we like you to do a screen test with the Allen? And it wasn't, wow. obviously it wasn't a screen test with, to see if I could act. They seen plenty of film on me. Mm -hmm. It was just to see how kind of the two of us interfaced. And uh, 
turned out there were three actors who tested and uh, I got lucky. That's incredible. Did you get to do any, so you, you did a scene with Alan. Did you get to do any with the rest of the, like Loretta? Did they need to get to do anything with Loretta? Did you know any of them beforehand? No, i never met any of them. Wow. We are family now. Um, the, the day, you know, I thought I got this job mm -hmm. that night, that afternoon, Alan called me and said, would you have dinner with me tonight? And I said, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and we sat and talked for hours about the show and his hopes and dreams for it. And it, it was it was really an extraordinary experience to get to know this guy and see mm -hmm. the intelligence and the heart and the uh, the the the, the the simplicity of his humanity and uh so we were we were solid excuse me i i get, I get misty when i talk about the show um, no no I, I yeah we were, we were we you know i was happy i was thrilled and when i reported to work first thing more in, in the morning uh, uh i walked on set thinking you know wayne rogers was a very popular guy and mm -hmm. he these people may resent my taking his place. Um, and so I walked in with a little bit of a kind of, I don't know what's going on here. And Gary Berghoff walked up and said, stuck out his hand and shook my hand and said how great, how happy they were to see me. Loretta Swift did the same thing. And then Jamie and then Bill and Larry. I mean, it was like, welcome. And it never stopped being that. We became... Wow we became welded together and, uh, and are today. That's incredible. I actually have a surprise for you, Tom, if you could bring out our surprise for uh, Mike. Hey, hey Loretta. Loretta. You're a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you actually here? I was, yeah. I was waiting for you, Mike. I was waiting for you to uh, talk about the label on that piece of clothing that said Wayne Rogers says, get off my back. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that there was actually some I, I some uh, label uh of, and it, it was not really wayne's but it was a wayne rogers um label and right. uh it, it their joke was uh wayne rogers says get off my back so <laughs> I, I i wrapped it like a little gift and sent it to mike yes <laughs> As she is wont to do. <laughs> hey, nice to see you, kiddo. Hi. Hello, big guy. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time. John Thank just, you. John just asked Good. questions and I just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> it's, actually, it's it's been easy for me, so thank you for doing it. I, you know what I love? I call. I asked Loretta to come on to do this as a surprise, and when I called, she had Mash playing in the background, and so did I. Like I, every night at seven, and I could. I thought I got like a, a like her answering machine when you when you answered. I was like, this can't be. I've got the wrong number, or maybe my TV's too loud. And I love that you were watching the show. Well, the thing is, uh, it was a very important show. The two shows tonight, McLean, uh, well, uh, the Colonel. Mm -hmm. Colonel's plane gets shot down, and the next episode, we get we get Mike. You know, BJ yeah. comes to Korea, and uh, so it was um, back to back important moments of the show, of the tapestry yeah. of the whole show of eleven seasons. So, and uh, Mike was so funny. It's just, you know, this kind of innocence that he brought to the first day of looking around and wondering how it's going to work out, and you know, Korea and all that. And uh, and then to watch them get him drunk and have him pull out of the Jeep saying to, to Larry Linville, hi, Ferret Face. So we knew, we knew from that moment on this character was going to pick right into the 407. <laughs> yeah, that was the best introduction of a new character on a show for the audience to watch. You were like, "Oh, this is you." You immediately <laughs> felt at ease. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, Mike? Do you remember who the other people uh, were who um, tested for BJ? Yes. Was Alan Fudge? Right. Mm. And Jamie Cromwell. Oh wow! I never knew and that. Jamie. Oh. Um, 
uh, and, and was uh, Alan Feinstein maybe one of one of the people uh, no. who auditioned? I don't, I don't know, but all we know is we're lucky to have gotten Mike. It was um, all it we was know is our, our great uh, <laughs> boost of adrenaline. Wow. I yeah. can't picture Jamie Cromwell do it. Thank God you got it. <laughs> that may have been the end. Of, I mean, I love Jamie Cromwell, but he always plays such d drastically different characters than I than I would have imagined, uh, you know, he, on MASH. So. He's an actor. He's, he and, he and I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to uh, get in here and say Jamie Cromwell can do anything. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It just so yeah. happens that Mike... Yeah. It was was perfect going in. I mean, he's just he's and and also perfect uh, for for the rest of the time doing it. Uh, but in terms of, um, of of Jamie, if you can't picture it, it's only because he didn't get to do it. Because Jamie is a this formidable actor. Just to watch the um um the that the, the size of his career what 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 he has done the different roles that he's played the different accents that he has used but he's, right. he's really uh, uh amazing yeah. um Jamie and I, am, am I Jamie and I, we got my yes always happens so um <laughs> there's that Jamie and I, 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 I Jamie do at this point in time we can't picture anybody else in that role or any of the other roles you know we're right. so updated with these people, the the mash people, yeah, it was perfectly cast. Uh, that that is true. Uh, 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 yes, uh, so you want to talk about perfection? So you look at Bill Christopher. Yeah. I used to tell Bill that I felt his his performance was so perfect that he brought people back to the church. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. I've had, I've had priests tell me yeah. that. Yeah, he <laughs> was. Yeah, <laughs> He's a quintessential, uh, quintessential priest, you know. Wow. But uh, but our BJ was our our sweet, innocent, lovely guy coming into this this situation <laughs> that <laughs> there were these crazy people that he um, just fit right in. He was just as crazy. Did you did you guys play any pranks on the set for newbies? Oh, oh, Mike, you oh, want to yeah. take that one? Pranks. <laughs> <laughs> Pranks. <laughs> I, we don't even look at it as a prank. This is oh. this is uh, MO. initiation. <laughs> it was it was a study. We uh, <laughs> we did some of the great ones, but they, unfortunately, they they were ongoing. They were sagas. And uh, <laughs> we carry them on over days and weeks. Um, they, they, they really were. They, they they don't bear telling, unfortunately, because they they took so long. But it, it was a I also have always felt you had to be there. You you, okay. you there was some things that you just simply. <laughs> What simply you can't understand. You just simply had to be there, and you had to be going through the craziness of being mm -hmm. there and doing those characters and trying to uh, make it through a war, doing yeah. doing the job that they were doing. So, uh, but yes, it was Prankville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I remember Mary, Mike. You know, Mike will tell you. I mean, we're, no, um, <laughs> it was an experience. Yeah, I think Mike Mike has got something this is gonna say. <laughs> no, sorry. sorry. I, no, I was just uh, I was just rem reminiscing in my brain about lying on the floor, laughing so hard. Alan and I curled up <laughs> laughing about something that we done. One of us had done to the other, mm -hmm. and Bert, the producer at the time and director, uh, said was standing there over us saying. Children, <laughs> children, <laughs> we have a show to do. <laughs> oh, amazing! Oh God, it was uh, it was a world of world of fun. Nothing could ever touch it. Uh, like now it. I remember uh, watching you lying on the floor weeping. You were you couldn't stop laughing and crying, and it was in Potter's office because Harry, you know what a devil he was. Oh, when the camera was on us and, and he was off camera, he would get us laughing. 
Houston. Mm -hmm. And Mike collapsed on the floor and could not stop laughing. And Charlie Dubin, remember Charlie, was di directing, and he's sitting in his director's chair with his hands in his head saying, please, people, please, people, please, people, because <laughs> we were putting him so far behind, and we could not stop laughing. It was, it was amazing. Great. That's incredible. I wish, I wish there was, is there footage of that somewhere? Oh, they, they, none of that was photographed. If it was, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. We had we they, they had outtake reels every year, but so that we could watch the you know right. some of the some of the goofs and some of the tricks and some of the stuff. But mostly, it was <laughs> it was not uh, not on film. Do you guys? So, how often do you guys have stayed? It was you, uh, you and you guys and Alan. You all stayed close. And uh, uh, do you guys talk more during the pandemic? Do you find, or, or just about the same, or well, about the same? You know, Alan weather <laughs> in New York, and uh, mm -hmm. Jim and I are out here, and um, Gary's in half the year in Florida and half the year in Connecticut. So it's oh, wow. uh, it's not you know we don't we have email connection and we have periodic phone connections and. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, if 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 people come to the West Coast, uh, we have a dinner. Mm -hmm. Or if us go east, we probably usually get together. But it's, right. uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to coordinate a reboot because I'd love. <laughs> <just, laughs> it seems to be the popular thing, you know. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you for a reboot, Loretta? Uh, absolutely, anytime. But uh, <laughs> it, it's just I like, would. Even it, revisiting, it just, uh, Mike wrote to us one day, he had occasion to be at Fox, and, and I forget what you were doing, Mike, but you walked over to stage nine and had this incredible experience of, of just walking in there and reliving so many memories, and yeah, you wrote wow. to us about it, and uh, it it just was uh, such... Yeah. A little, a little miracle to uh, to be together with that wonderful group. Uh, it just was wonderful, and so much a part of our lives, you know. And uh, reboot, yeah, in in a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, we, you know, but but we we didn't want the horse to to ride the horse downhill. We didn't want it to um, right. come to the point that some network executive <laughs> said, "Oh, ho hum, I think we've had enough of that," and pulled the plug. Right. So we told them when we wanted to end the show, and we told them why we wanted to end it and how we wanted to end it. We wanted to move uh, uh, an episode that would end the war, mm -hmm. um, and they didn't. They said, "Oh no, no, you can't have that." <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, Deep thinkers. Finally, but yeah. <laughs> they, well, they, they actually, when we ex explained what we wanted, this executive came down. You remember, Lorette? We were sitting in our little yes, hut where yes. we gathered our little, our little green room <laughs> this, guy, this guy came in and he said uh, no, you have to understand uh here you, you remember david jansen in the fugitive and mm -hmm. was, <laughs> he said, well at the end of the show at the end when he wanted to end it he wanted to end to find the one-armed man who had actually killed the wife and clear doctor killed or whatever his name was and 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 we said yeah and he said and it Ruined the show and syndication. Wow. <laughs> we, we, sort of, we sort of looked at each other, and then I turned to the guy and said, "It might surprise you to know that many people in America understand that the Korean War ended <laughs> <laughs> years ago. <laughs> years and years ago." He got up and walked out. Well, you know, and, uh, on and the subject they, they, of, they did, of um, would it last they, or longevity or or not repeating ourselves i have to say that um look the uh, life that mash has in this afterlife of mm -hmm. 40 some odd years that we're rerunning and have this, this enormous audience still and still um still getting new fans it's being passed on from generation to generation and i I, I can't help but wonder if we wouldn't have just lasted on and on and on and on the way the show seems to have um, the relevance 
and and the lasting power all these years it 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 there's it doesn't seem to have any end in sight for this global family that mash has created well i think that's yeah. right Loretta, but i don't think that the answer would have been to do 11 year 12 13 14 15 i think i think it is the gem it is because it was encapsulated and it we were luckily able to end it with that wonderful two and a half hour movie that gave us the opportunity to say goodbye and thank you to each other and to the audience and i think mm -hmm. that and i think that's what has created this i've said many times you know we knew we were doing a show that was good mm. we were doing a show that was popular i mean that was obvious in the ratings and what have you and the reaction but what we didn't really understand fully until the end of the show was that we were what we were doing was part of a social phenomenon yeah mm. and and the show the show continues, as Lorette said, it continues to meet, inspire people in a way that I find deeply touching. That yeah, thing. and it, it created a conscience back then for people to have. And I, that's one of the things I also noticed, too. Uh, uh, the humor is obviously amazing, the camaraderie, everything you see, but it creates a social conscience throughout other people who watch it as well. It gives people a perspective on war from you know a different angle. And I, I think that's another thing that holds up well. Yep, I, I just had a letter uh, on uh, Instagram uh, from a fan, and it was so moving. Uh, he's 52 now, and wow. he, he chronicles everything. He says he was three when <laughs> the pilot was on, 14 wow. when it ended with a finale, and mm -hmm. he said the, the MASH group uh, ensemble has taken him through some of the darkest periods of his life. Now, wow. that's yeah. very, very deep. That's very profound that we have helped. This, this <laughs> what is a, a sitcom, okay, in quotes, has mm -hmm. taken this 52-year-old man through some of the darkest periods of his life. He grew up watching it with his dad. His dad is now uh, gone. And he writes, it, he was writing to me, he said, I, when I see you, I, all the memories of sitting with my dad, whom I loved, watching the show come back in this flood. And, and he watches the show today, these days, religiously, never misses the show. So it, uh, it's a phenomenon in that way. Wow. I also think... <laughs> the characters are people. They're just not, they're not characters. You know, I guess in the book, they started out to be people. And uh, the series uh, has people, real people, that the audience has related to. And they become family. I had a, a woman wrote to me at one point that uh, she was all alone growing up. Her mother had a half, held two jobs. And... Um, Growing up, she regarded me on MASH as her big sister, and she became wow. a nurse because of it. <laughs> she, she wrote a letter uh, to me, married, two children, talking about how I had and the show had influenced her life. They were, the show was her companion growing up. I mean, it's just, it's, um, it's, it's beyond, obviously, for me, it's beyond a sitcom where you have these people so moved and, and um, affected by the show. Yeah. I hear the beeps, John. It's not even me. It's not even me. I think, I think Loretta had another call coming in, but um, yeah, I was like, um, yeah, but I, you know, I agree. I agree with that too. And I'd like to know from both of you too, just because those shows, um, you know, MASH is one of my top five favorite shows, like the Nick Van Dyke show, all those ones that hold up, you know, so well and stand the test of time. Uh, do you guys watch anything now that you feel like that, like has the same impact? Cause it seems like, the sitcom's kind of gone by the wayside a little bit. Uh, well, there's a show called Modern Family that is oh, uh, quite extraordinary. I think. Yeah, isn't that off the? It's all. It went off the. Yeah, that was a great show when it was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah wife, that was. Lives and dies by that show. It's it's a great show. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so there are yeah. some I think there's some little gems, uh, but um, I you know I don't I think Mash 
uh, Gene Reynolds, who was one of the uh, sources of the show, mm -hmm. Larry Gelbard put together, uh, really made the show happen. Um, and Gene said, you know, MASH is like a, um, uh, a, a, a an existential um, example for people. Um, mm -hmm. You, you, most people didn't go to war. A lot of people never put on a uniform, but everybody understands having to do something that is more important than your life at this point. And you've got to take time away from your loved ones and you've got to, whether it's work or some effort or whatever. He said, there's something about the show that people identify with on a deeply personal level. And um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's an existential um, phenomenon as as a result of that, and I think he I think he was onto something that people talk about Hot Lips or Margaret or BJ or um, Hawkeye or you know Radar or Klinger. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going. But mm -hmm. people have their favorite characters, people have their favorite stories, but there's something um, in my experience. There's something about the way people respond to the show that is. Uh, really thrilling to me personally, but really deeply um, embedded in, in their being. Mm. Right. What about you, Loretta? Do you, do you feel like that's a, oh, Loretta's back. <laughs> um, do you feel like that? Do you feel like that? Do you feel like there's any other shows or like, cause my friends um, uh, who are, I was telling Mike earlier, my friends who are doctors and uh, you know, have been messaging me just about Mike coming on, let alone, or like, you still have fanboys in the doctor community. It's gotta feel good to feel like you influenced all these people. Like you played those roles so well. Like you were just saying, somebody became a nurse because of you. It's gotta feel amazing. Did you guys have like people on the set to kind of um, talked about like what it's like to be a doctor, maybe even in a war or anything like that? Or was it all the writers and like uh, that kind of thing that brought it to life? Well, we had a we had a doctor who was our our uh, technical expert, and we had a nurse on set on set, a surgical nurse on set uh, wow. anytime we were in the surgery, and she was fabulous. Oh she wow! Okay, knew the stuff and pointed it out to us. And and sometimes doctors would have to explain to us what a procedure was about, mm -hmm. if something needed to be done, uh, the way it would have been done then, as opposed to the way it would be done now. Wow! About how they discovered think how the people in the mash during Korea actually discovered medical procedures that hadn't been known to be done because they were dealing with uh, circumstances that uh, that they had to respond to right and they had to sort of put things together um, Wow yeah it was uh, really I you know I, I'm sort of a sap about the show I, I just I just love it and I love yeah. it people. That's great that you still guys have still those fond memories and stuff. Did you get a lot of input on the script, and did you guys have a lot of control over your characters, or were you, was it any need for that? Yeah, when, uh, the, the, one of the great things that happened to me on the first day on the show, um, we went through uh, the acknowledgement. Everybody said hello, nice to see you, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sat down around a table and read through the script. When that was new to me because I'd never been on a show that it had that luxury. Right. Uh, read the script for each other and, and the pro the producers got a sense of the timing and the, the script supervisor got a sense of it, etc. We got to the end of the script and Gene said, okay, page one. <laughs> and I looked at him like, I'm not, I don't understand. He said, oh, Mike, uh, this is when we go back through the script to see if any of if you folks have any questions, any problems, or any suggestions that we need, and I thought to myself, I have died and gone to heaven. These wow. people actually want to hear what, you know, I've been on sets where actors were thought of as, as sort of furniture. <laughs> and <laughs> responding to you as a, an intelligent, talented person who might have something to offer. And, and Incredible. It really, it, it, oh, it was fabulous. It really became a, a, a kind of creative community. Alan wrote and directed. Harry directed. I got to chance to write some things and directed. Uh, wow. Jamie directed. Uh, uh, David Stiers, I think, who came in later, I think he directed uh, an episode. 
we, there was this always this sense of let's experiment, let's play, let's flex our, our muscles, um, and and periodically something would come up, and th somebody'd say, "Oh, that's a great joke, but maybe it'd be better if so and so said it." I mean, there was great gen okay. great generosity on the parts of uh, parts of that's the great to hear that. Yeah. The experience. Uh, there, there was that, and eventually, uh, I got to um, really um, have a voice and and do uh, do. Uh, I did have tremendous uh, input into the growth of my character, yep. who was uh, I was not really pleased with the first couple of seasons because uh, I felt. Um, uh, she was a little bit, a little bit of a cut-out paper doll, um, acting out what they thought a head nurse would be, and um, uh, little by little, it started to improve. Jean brought two ladies onto the set, Mary Kay Place, and um, uh, what was the other gal's name? Anyway, uh, he assigned them to me, and we sat and talked. Uh, all day, one weekend, one Sunday, and we took her from her birth to the 4077th, and they wrote the first I considered breakthrough kind of thing for my character called Hot Lips and Empty Arms, where she was finally uh, uh, seeing that this relationship with Frank Burns was was um, undercutting her her personal value. Her uh, it was. Uh, uh, she had no respect for him uh, as a doctor, and that was mm -hmm. the way he was being written. He was a ninny. He was he was <laughs> not an intellect, and and here she was, uh, kind of degrading herself in a relationship. But he's married. So it's not that it's a love affair going somewhere, and it will, you know, it was just not good. And I I would do tours or whatever, and come back and tell Jean that people, fans, would come to me and say, what, what is this character of yours doing with that guy? And Jean mm -hmm. would laugh, and say, well, you know, because they love you and they want... I said, no, 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 Jean, I'm having difficulty um, just just making that happen every, every week, overlooking uh, his, his flaming faults and and just ignoring what everybody was making fun of and it was making her look stupid and you're not writing her that way she's she's intelligent she's a good nurse and so forth so so i'm having trouble making ends meet you know so little by little the writers uh, uh started to work with me and um we finally got to a place where uh, they said, what do you see happening? And I said, she has to break off with this guy. She has to go to, to Japan, you know, go to Tokyo and, and meet somebody who outranks Frank and who's not a doctor and let her, let her uh, bring, bring him back to the four or seven seventh, let her get engaged. And I, and I remember Jean said, and then what? And I said, and then she gets married. Harry can give me away. And he said, but that's so permanent. I said, Jean, <laughs> you're divorced. How can you say that to me? There's nothing permanent <laughs> about marriage, you know? And so and <laughs> we went, we went all through, we went through her divorce from, from, uh, Penobscot. So we went, we took her a long, long way. And just, just in the talking out of, um, of what was the possibilities of it. And it made her very real. It made her uh, a, a person, a real person. But I think essentially that is the, the uh, charm and the uh, lasting power of MASH. Those people are not actors those those the actors they're occupied those characters those people and they're very real to people our audience feels they're a part of our family of right. our unit of, of you know and doctors today look at that time as a time when medicine was the practice of medicine you know today medicine is different it's a business it's insurance mm -hmm. it's about right. and so the doctors look at the show and like 
long for those days in a way. That was purity. That was really fine. And those those doctors had such integrity mm-hmm. in a place where it was it was not running rampant. They were standing in blood working on on kids that aren't old enough to shave, you know. And so so the the uh, purity and integrity uh, and all oh, that the from from the producers to the writers to the, uh, the actors who occupied those people, it just is a very real experience even when they're making you laugh even when they're they're crazy because of what they're going through mm-hmm. it's all very honest and real yeah i wish i had that kind of coverage i actually had a doctor who was influenced by you guys who wrote out my prescription in rocks in the dirt and i was like that is a little too much i don't know how to actually write that uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's gonna be hard to do um but yeah that is i'd love to see how you guys would have handled covid like that would have been a great you know, because uh, I feel like you guys would have handled it a lot better <laughs> than uh, the, our current administration and everybody else is doing. No, the current administration. Well, actually, doing current, yeah, current administration is fine. It was yes. the, I'm, I still don't know. I lost a year. We all did. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, no, I would have loved to have seen that kind of thing. It is weird how like you like I, I that's what's just great about TV, too, is that you you know, we don't always get the kind of characters we want in real life, but like when you're, when you're watching a TV show, those are the doctors you want. I've had, I've been turned away for not having the right insurance a million times. And I'm like, BJ would never do this. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, where's a, I need, I need a, you know, major Houlihan and all those guys to take care of me. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, de- departing from the medical aspect for one second, you asked what what shows do we watch? I don't find myself watching um, comedy as much because what we have now, I don't find as heavyweight as it could be. But I tell you, the show I watch the most is SVU, uh, Law and Order oh. SVU. So that ensemble is as close to the feeling I had with our family on MASH uh, that's on television today. And I think Mariska Hargitay is arguably the best actress on television today. She's amazing, mm-hmm. amazing, seamless, totally, totally believable. And when that, when, when the episode ends, I, my, my consciousness thinks that those people go off and finish their day they go somewhere <laughs> they have their life going out because because they're very very real right and some of the people on uh, in that ensemble are not actually just actors you know you have iced tea or you have um uh some other actors uh, that they're, they're actors now but uh, i mean uh this they're they're really and and i think the writers try to stay in tune with what's happening uh, whether it's uh, racial or or uh, mm-hmm. female, but you know, I mean, they they try to stay current and and in in the moment and yes. have people deal with those very real situations. So I'm very impressed with the work on that show. Mike's done the show. Yeah, I was just about to say you've done that. Did you feel a uh, uh, like <clears throat> when you were guys? Excuse me, sorry. When you guys were on Mash, like there was a lot of. Um, was there any pushback for doing like, like dabbling into the politics, stuff like that? Because you're right. We have a lot of shows now that kind of handle it, but it's a very natural kind of flow into that at this point. You know what I mean? I think almost people expect you on any kind of show to touch on that kind of stuff. But back then, was it uh, controversial at all? Or, or, or were you guys like you were breaking a lot of new ground? So I don't know if you felt any of that pushback. Oh, yeah. We got, you know, we, we had um, we, we did a show where the. Uh, Soldier was uh, in shell shock and thought he was Jesus Christ. Oh and yeah, it was a fabulous, fabulous show. A great episode. And we were blasted by the so the Southern Reconstructionist, uh, you know, fundamentalist Christian groups. Right. And, and we had one guy, a minister from some church somewhere, who co- contacted us and said, "That show is better." for me and my parishioners than any single sermon I could ever give. Wow. And I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah. 
Right? Yeah. Can't get any better than that. No. no. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to wrap up uh, with you guys. I feel like I've, ca- I've kept Mike on for uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> I didn't even realize the time went by, man. <laughs> uh, 20 minutes longer than we said we were going to go. But uh, I just wanted to thank you both so much um, as, just for coming on and entertaining me and, you know, my audience and stuff. So. It was very, very nice of you to invite me, John, and, and nice of you to have a, a, a surprise for me. <laughs> I'm glad okay, I'm glad it worked out. Loretta, thank you so I much for coming on. I hope you were surprised. <laughs> I was indeed. I was indeed. I thought I thought you were, you know, busy in New York entertaining and doing all that, <laughs> doing all that New York you stuff. Clarify, you want to explain what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that they know that I don't have, like, a raffle or something. I mean, what do you want to do? I'm busy entertaining. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was like, we're not off the air yet, Mike. Mike Don't. Oh the the Hulahan House. We've heard of it before. <laughs> oh God, that uh, is great. You, you know, you uh, you're getting like a taste of what it was like to be with the boys, <laughs> the boys as I call them, the boys. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh Mike, Mike my is God. You a taste Thank you. <laughs> what I yeah. what I what I had to put up with. <laughs> I can only imagine that was beautiful. I was like, "Am I in an episode right now? What's going on?" Uh, <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, I can use this as a credit now." Just a little bit of a taste. <laughs> oh well, thank you both thank both you so for so much. Me surprise my brother and absolutely. Uh, God bless everybody and stay safe. Wear your mask, distance, get your vax, you know, do all the right things, okay? If you do them for you, you're doing them for me. Absolutely. Will do. Take care. Thank you so (laughs) much. Thank you so much, Loretta. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jim. Um, Dystopia tonight.